This is Twit. Information is the currency of business. And if that's truly the case, the more information you have, one would think that the more valuable uh, the internal knowledge that you have and the more valuable your right. company might be. But again, it's what you do with that data. And, and, and you've talked, talked about this. I mean, we have all kinds of information, but we really don't know how to utilize it to gain more customers, to drive revenue, uh, retain customers, retention and loyalty. You know, we're not... We're not figuring it out. So what's the what's the missing piece of, in the puzzle? Well, I mean, I, I think there's like three levels uh, when we're talking about <clears throat> data and information and so forth. And I think at the at the baseline level, it, it, I think that there's the argument it's called data driven marketing. All right, and then and then you're right. There's a lot of information in there because once data is uh, uh, collected, which is just a moment in time, and it's shared with others, then it becomes information. But uh, there's a lot of information that doesn't provide insight. So I think the next level is is insight-driven uh, marketing, where you're really getting to the core essence of what motivates consumers to purchase or not purchase from you or others. Um, but you know, really, insight does take human capital in in marriage with technology. I, I don't think you can um, argue one or the other. Uh, being separate, I think together it makes more sense. There's always that notion that data drives and gut decides. And uh, I think that, you know, for anyone to think that the technology is always going to give the insight is is um, maybe perhaps not seeing the full truth. But then I think that the, where, where the world is moving in a much more, let's say, progressive standpoint is going to be innovation-driven marketing. And there are some organizations like GE and Nike that are already there where they've got the data sets you know, they're already consuming the information. Uh, they're gathering the insight on the consumers and the segments. And now what's happening is they're developing product uh, with chips in apparel, for example, or chips in sort of, uh, you know, oil rigs. Uh, and they're actually starting to understand how to actually develop new products that progress and that can either change societies or communities. I mean, it is almost becoming a data, uh, sort of a, a data-driven economic society. Uh, so I think that that's the third level. So the maturity cycle is, yep, a lot of data, got it, all right? Some of it's old and dark and inside. Some of it's transactional. Let's aggregate it. Let's consume it. Let's try to find some answers. Next stage is, you know what? Maybe this information is useful to help drive our strategy. Uh, maybe make smart choices in our forecasting and funding and pointing our you know, activities in social and advertising towards certain consumers. I think the third level, there is a very small number of organizations that are there. And it would be typical of a, like a... Uh, you know, an 80-20 rule or, or sort of a pyramidal approach. But having too much information isn't always helpful. I think what's best is uh, only consuming the information that gives you the answers that you need to, uh, you know, move the business forward and have a better, happy customer. So you mentioned Nike, you mentioned a lot of brands, and you kind of went down the space of wearable, which I think is our next really big as a, as, as a marketer, uh, an advantage, an opportunity, also a little scary, because yeah. you have now the ability to take data that's very, very real time from your consumer. And you not only have this report anymore that you, you printed out with information on it, you've got wearable data. That's huge in, in, in building a relationship with your customer. And, and you talked about Nike taking advantage of that. Why is it working so well for them? What are they doing that is helping them stay ahead of other brands and other businesses that are uh, entering this space? Yeah, um, at Nike and or BMW, I can talk a little bit about both. I mean, uh, what Nike is doing is they're basically saying, I'm going to treat each individual as an individual. And that speaks to their brand about the aspiration of the individual itself. And by putting technology into the apparel, while you make a good point that it, perhaps it's a little spooky, what they're trying to do is start to learn. They're trying to learn about Jeff Winsburg, Tanya, or a group of people, or, or geo region, or a type of athlete which of course, as you can imagine, starts to feed into what would be the best kind of products to build, whether it's for uh, high extreme conditions or for the everyday jogger. Uh, but really what's interesting too is as they're collecting this information, you can imagine there's a whole host of applications. Health would be one of them. Um, and you know, I think they're trying to figure out right now with all this information, you know, is it uh, A, appropriate for the brand or appropriate in general to use this to help drive maybe perhaps other sort of innovative ways to help people that have maybe diabetes or a particular uh, you know condition uh, to to either not just build a product but also come up with information that can 
sell at some point. Um, you know, that would be a good example. I, mean, I got a BMW last year. I haven't had one in a while that's, uh, that's been new. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm in condition to think that every 3,000 miles, I'm supposed to go get an oil change just because that Jiffy Lube did a really good job on that. And then all I realized, I'm like 6,000 miles in, and I'm like, you know, I need to get an oil change. And, you know, I call up to the place. They're like, no, nope, no. Nope. And I'm like, okay, you sure I don't need oil change? Like, no, just press a few buttons, and it's going to tell you uh, when you need to come in. In fact, the car is just going to call you up and tell you to come in. Okay. So really, I bought a like a $70,000 computer. Uh, and, you know, I, I wonder how I can try to figure out how to maintain it. And it basically is giving me all the guidance necessary to tell me, just go to where you need to go A to B and we'll take care of the rest. I mean, that really is when you think about a data and they're using that to help inform, um, you know, my behavior as a driver. I'm sure they're aggregating that up um, and applying it to their dealers uh, as well as trying to figure out, um, you know, driving patterns and as such. 